If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and attempt to solve the question on your own before listening on. What we're going to do to solve this question is use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy. Now, this is a principle that we've used in solving other questions. And of course, it basically just states that the final total energy is going to be set equal to the initial total energy. And there's different types of energy. The gravitational potential energy can actually be eliminated from this equation because the object is not changing its height throughout the course of this problem. So in other words, this object is just oscillating back and forth on a level surface. So we can eliminate the gravitational potential energy. Now we'll notice that the question states that the object is released from rest, which means that the initial velocity is zero and that's going to allow the initial kinetic energy to also equal zero. So we can eliminate the kinetic energy from this side of the equation. Now we know that kinetic energy is equal to one half times mv squared. We also know that the spring potential energy is one half times kx squared. So we'll make those substitutions for these two forms of energy. On the right hand side, we also have a spring potential energy term. So we would use one half k times x squared. But what we want to note is that initially the spring is compressed by four centimeters. So if you can imagine a spring that is initially relaxed, but then somebody comes in and pushes the object up against it, then the distance that the spring was compressed would represent what is known as the amplitude. It's the maximum compression of the spring. So initially when the spring is in its maximally compressed state, we can substitute in A for this X. And again, just note that A is equal to four centimeters. Now what we want to do is solve this equation for the speed of the object. So we're going to solve for V. Notice that one half appears in all three terms so we can algebraically divide it out. We'll go ahead and then subtract KX squared to the right hand side. We can actually factor out a K from the two terms on the right side. We could then divide both sides by the mass M and then finally take the square root of both sides of the equation. So here we have an expression that would give us the speed of the object for a given value of x. So we'll go ahead and start to solve the different parts of the question. So for example, in part a, we're being asked to find the maximum speed of the object. Well, the maximum speed of the object will occur when the spring is not compressed at all. That means that x is going to equal zero meters. So we're gonna substitute that in for x. And then to calculate the maximum speed at this point, we just have to plug in the known values. Remember the amplitude was four centimeters. Make sure you multiply that by 10 to the minus two so you can convert it into the standard unit of meters. K, the spring constant was given to us in its standard unit. And then the mass of the object was also given in the standard unit. And when you calculate that on your calculator, of course you would get a value of approximately 0.28 meters per second. So that's going to represent the maximum speed of the object. In part B, they're telling us to calculate the speed when the spring is compressed by 1.5 centimeters. So that means that for X, we're just gonna plug in 1.5 times 10 to the minus two. All the other values will be the same. And when you process that calculation, you should get approximately 0.26 meters per second. Notice that's a little bit less than the maximum speed. For part C, we actually don't need to do any new work. It's asking us to calculate the speed as the object passes the 1.5 centimeter point. Well, that's the same value of X we used in part B. So in one case, the spring might have been compressed by the 1.5 centimeters. And in the other case, it might have been stretched by 1.5 centimeters. But again, the speed will be the same. So the answer for parts B and C will be the 0.26 meters per second. Finally, for part D, for what value of X does the speed equal one half the maximum speed? We could set up the following equation. So on the left-hand side of this equation, we would have the speed V. That's just the expression we developed earlier for the speed V. And then we're setting that equal to half of the max. Notice that this is the maximum velocity. Recall that when we calculated the maximum velocity, we had subtracted a term of zero. So it's just not appearing this time in our equation. So the right-hand side becomes one half of V max. We can actually square both sides of this equation to get rid of the root. Notice that we would end up squaring the one half to make one fourth. We have a factor of k over m on both the left and right hand side so it can be divided out. Now we're trying to solve for x so we could subtract a squared over to the right side. Notice that there's a one in front of this a squared so 1 4 a squared minus one a squared would be negative 3 4 a squared. 
we could divide both sides by negative 1 to cancel out the negative sign. And then finally we can take the square root of both sides. Notice that when you take the square root of the right hand side, you're going to square root the 3. You're going to square root the 4, but that's going to become 2. And then the square root of a squared is just a. So now all we have to do is multiply the amplitude, which was that 4 centimeters, by radical 3 over 2. And when you plug that into your calculator, you should get a value of x of approximately 3.5 centimeters. So that is indeed the correct answer to part D. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you liked it, please click the thumbs up icon and also subscribe to the channel so you could stay tuned for other videos. Remember, you're welcome to send your own question into this email address and I'll do my best to post a solution to it on YouTube.